Great. Thanks for having me here. Um, my name is Tim Shu. I'm a um, network sales engineer slash project manager for Dorado Software. Um, so a lot like uh, Beyond Edge and a couple of the other partners here today, um, we have a, a set of software around management and everything else. I'm going to hit a little bit on it at the end of the slide, at the end of my slides, just so you kind of know what we do. But my main purpose is actually to go through with you guys and talk about the customer experiences that I've had and, and the customers that I've interacted with, how they're using Sonic today in real enterprise environments, um, not necessarily kind of in the, the Microsoft, you know, initial use case scenario of, of a cloud in, in the traditional sense, at least from that. So that's my plan. Um, take you guys through here. Got a couple of slides to just, the first one kind of just key up uh, kind of what the enterprise uh, typical customer expectations are for you guys and then talk about how that expectation and that environment and all that flows into the data center and telco customer examples that I have. And then last, I'm gonna end on the edge in, in, in campus style use cases, which uh, as Beyond Edge was just saying, uh, is definitely uh, a very big game changer for Sonic, I think. Uh, but I definitely see that feature gap closing very quickly. So, And then last, I'll talk a little bit about our solution to it and have some Q&A. So these enterprise customers or, or telco, large telco customers that I've been interacting with uh, have a lot of these kind of built-in legacy kind of mentality. Uh, so you, you have a lot of these kind of ideas where they think they're buying monolithic tools or buying a set of uh, things that they expect to just work, right? They expect these components of what makes up their data center or their environments that are you know, spread across multiple data centers, many cases, uh, the tooling and then the applications that they're buying or the operating systems that they're running in the case of like VMware, they want high integration and things like that, right? So these are kind of the expectation world that these customers are coming from when they start to look at trying to use Sonic. So the data center and telco customers, this is this is the you know the, the easy kind of use case for Sonic today. I think this one really is pretty well met. Uh, we can meet pretty much all these needs with customers. The 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 industry has definitely gone to the EVPN, VXLAN overlay, underlay technology. The layer three stuff is all you know tried and true. Everybody kind of knows it. So I feel like this is the easy spot for going into Sonic into these enterprises. Most of the time with these customers, um, the, the conversations that we have are around, you know, they want a protocol that maybe is vendor specific or they want a specific uh, thing to integrate with something else because that's, you know, what they're used to. And a lot of times this, this conversation turns into what is it that you need from the network? Like what is the, what is the problem you're solving by protocol XYZ, right? So a lot of those conversations really change the operational mindset of these customers. It makes them start to think about solving the problem and less about the protocols and the, the technologies and the, the RFP checkpoints, for lack of a better term, if you've been doing this for a little while. Um, that really does force a bit of a game changer. And for me, this is what I think makes Sonic a lot of fun for these customers. I can go into these customers and say, you know, you don't have to worry about the protocol but what problem are you solving with your customers? And a lot of this turns into that automation and tooling that we talk about, um, that we've talked about even in the first slide today. It really becomes very interesting of how you can use a tool like Sonic, how easily you can take a container, add a container, change something. Um, you go to put it on the edge, you can, re you can slim down some of the containers that maybe you don't need, that sort of stuff, right? So uh, it definitely becomes very interesting here. Um, I've seen quite a few of these go to deployment. Uh, these are the easiest ones, like I said. Scale is almost never a problem. All of these are smaller than where Sonic came from, right? You're, a lot of these are data centers of, you know, a few hundred racks at most, right? So any questions on this kind of customer? You guys feel like this is an enterprise customer? What am I missing? Nobody got any thoughts? It's the easy one, right? We do a lot of this integration, by the way, with more than one software vendor. So a lot of times we're putting Sonic in here as the spine and something else as the leaf. That was the first way I did a lot of Sonic stuff. Um, and we'll also be doing where, like you were talking about, you, maybe a customer wants to do a migration in some sort of like brownfield slash greenfield environment. They might prove this out in greenfield, do a whole pod of Sonic, and then they'll look at this old environment and he's nodding his head, you get this too. You want to do this old environment and they want to replace something with, hey, we're now into Sonic, can we replace this? So this becomes a lot of fun. 
You can get these customers to make these changes. They will do it. This is, this is very doable. So the next one, and the, what I think is the most interesting one lately, is moving Sonic onto these edge use cases. These are the customers, these are the environments for the customers that a lot of times if they're a retail customer, which I've, I've dealt with a couple of these, or a, a customer that looks like retail, they have a lot of remote locations. Uh, you, this is where Sonic is an interesting mix because it came from a layer three world, it came from that sort of stuff. Um, the platforms and expectations that customers had in the past around this, around what a layer two campus should look like, whether it's a traditional campus, even in some cases I've dealt with universities and schools trying to do this, um, their expectations of how it should interact, what protocols it needs, does it do NAC, does it do these sort of things? These are things that we do need to invest in and get the rest of the way there, right? Some of this is working today, depending upon the particular you know distribution or vendor platforms that we're on, um, but like, like, uh, like you were saying, I mean, we see a lot of uh, need for Sonic is, is, is CPU hungry. It's, uh, it's very um, uh, resource intensive from, a, from an operating system, a network operating system platform. The, the good part is it empowers the customers to see the value in what they're getting out of that. The bad part, of course, is that means that that same switch that they used to buy for a smaller amount of money now might cost a little bit more, right? Oh, it's investment in hardware versus other things, right? So you're trading that off. but. Here, the other thing that I find very interesting is customers are coming up with very innovative ways, at least with me, to use the overlay and the underlay idea. They're building non-traditional spine and leafs, so they'll be using, you know, they'll be going from a, what would be in the, in the campus called a core network, which you could read as a spine, and then they will build, you know, an, an IDF or an MDF, and then from there they might attach another whole set of leaf switches, right? Um, these customers, uh, the big thing for me has always been abandoning uh, stacking. And that's where the automation and tooling come in for us. So if you can prove to the customer that stacking doesn't solve a problem anymore because I can automate you around that problem, that's a huge thing. Um, <laughs> nodding your head, you've seen it, yep. <laughs> Exactly. So, so this is where I think a, a bit of a change in the hardware platform is going to come, and I, I think you're nodding your head the same. You think the same thing. I think we're going to end up with some sort of kind of intermediate device that would be a, a you know, potentially more powerful leaf slash extension spine or something like that, right? So, whatever that's going to be, where you're building, I wouldn't call it a three tier, but a multi tier. When you you move to a, a like a certainly like universities, I've had this where they put in on that on that edge, they'll put in a, you know a larger pair of switches at the at, at an at a, at a breakpoint where they might have another ten switches below it or something like that. They'll want to use those ports to put end users on, but they'll also want to use those ports to aggregate the switches that connect upstream. They're also building HA within this confine. So, so these customers. Um, are, are doing this today. I mean, we, I, I have done deployments with universities. I've done deployments with uh, retailers and with uh, very traditional kind of campus mentality where they have a need to do something. I've done distributed HPCs, which are actually really fun. Um, so those are, those are good examples of this. So, um, but this is where I think Sonic is looking at kind of a bit of a break point. I don't know if you know, you're looking at saying, do we need to create another you know, version of it, I think that's probably a bit a bit overkill. But I definitely think, you know, potentially looking at how do we make it fit within a, a tighter CPU boundary or, or maybe there's a, you know, some recommendations we can help customers with of, hey, these containers may not be needed and, or trimmed down, something like that. I, I think that's something we could definitely do some time and, and, and effort on. But, yeah. And then the, the kind of last spectrum. The kind of last spectrum I had here was just to kind of contrast the customers that I interact with between that build versus buy continuum that I talked about in the kind of the first slide. And this is what I see a big difference between customers. There, there's a lot of the customers that are kind of on the extreme end of wanting to build it themselves. And those customers might be all the way to the end of, you know, hey, I want to go get my own, build my own distribution of Sonic, right, for in-house use and everything else. Um, and then you kind of have the other extreme that just want to buy something off the shelf that just works. And I don't want to worry about, you know, what build of Sonic I'm on. I don't want to go, you know, look at the 
the list of bugs and make sure I pull in the ones that I want. They don't understand that mentality, right? So I think there's a huge space for us as partners to fill these voids and, and to help these customers and kind of uh, help them understand and to the point of the guy presenting earlier. I don't think Sonic's all necessarily about saving money. I think this is very much a game changer from the standpoint of a customer owning this and taking responsibility for it. So I, I like the customers that, and I think most customers, like anything, you're to build a spectrum of left to right. Most people land somewhere in the middle. Most of my customers are landing somewhere in the middle. So we need to fill in that, that perspective from the middle. I think the two ends have been pretty well captured, <laughs> right? So that's kind of the, the last slide I have on my own product. Um, that's where I think we fit in really well. The automation and tooling product that we have uh, allows the customer to to kind of do both sides of that game and, and complete that full cycle for them. They can be as independent as they want and they can go uh, and use our product like an out of the box kind of vendor agnostic management platform. So, make sense? Everybody's been quiet all day. So, any questions? Are there any questions? Yes. Yes. So uh, you mentioned that uh, you would like to see uh, the trimming of the distribution, right, to uh, fit into smaller CPU or maybe hardware boxes, right? Uh, when you talk about this, like, yeah, at the edge, uh, like, do you have an idea of uh, what is a uh, hardware size that you need to fit into? Hopefully, you're not looking for some super small ones, but uh, just trying to get a sense of, like, uh, where are you targeting for, right? Or what is the distribution? Let's say if you get down to this size, you get to open up this much market. If you further cut down, you get to that much market. You do you have a? I, I I guess, and I'm looking at my 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 peer here slash uh, competitor at times. The, Yeah, so it, it ends up being a combination of the chips that you need to support Sonic. So the the, the, the more cost-effective chips, I'll say, <laughs> aren't always uh, included in the Psi today. So that's one factor, and then the other factor is the CPU kind of hungry side of it, which is being addressed. Uh, it's not as bad, uh, but it, it still is a little CPU and memory hungry. So I think those that combination, to his point, and, and they need to switch hardware platforms, I mean, I, I would say although I don't sell hardware anymore and haven't for a little while, I, I would say there needs to be some less expensive hardware in the market. Yeah, it, it needs to be, I think port density is another equation, but most of my customers to date wanting to do this on the edge are okay with 48 port switches or whatever. But if you if we really wanted to penetrate this market, you're gonna have customers that want 24 or, or less port options. Yeah, we are so. going to see the OPEC WRC and then at the low end, you know, something like that. But yeah. Say twelve because this is where, you know, this, this is where this. Um, yep. So, you know, one hour leads to more thirty dollars a month. Yep, and and that's essentially my experience as well. I don't think I don't think you're going to have a lot of customers wanting to do Sonic on really really low density cheap switches. I don't think you're going to see a lot of customers wanting a, a ten or twelve port switch doing Sonic. Uh, they just go buy something and plug it into their network, but. Exactly at that point, yeah. Price is almost the single driving factor at that point, but um, and they, they view those as disposable largely. So, but I do think there's a need here for some lower end. And, and I, to his point, I think the chipset family matters too. So today, when you're looking at the chips, you know, supporting the EVPN and all that other stuff, they're they're usually pretty expensive chips. Um, so even within the market, we have chips, you know, that we can get a little bit cheaper that do support Sonic, but then we lose the EVPN support. And I don't know about you, but a lot of my customers are like, no, no, we want to use that in the edge. So then it becomes, how do we get that in there for that price point? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
That's a good point. Yeah, so the the campuses that I did recently were large enough they weren't using SD WAN. So, yeah, but if you're doing an SD WAN to it, then you you could do a strictly layer two. Correct. Yeah. So, anybody else? These things, th these things already have pretty underpowered processes in them. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the incremental cost for, you know, an extra core is what, 150 bucks? I mean, in the big scheme of things. And so we talk about trying to carve all this stuff down. The, the amount of engineering costs associated with sitting here trying to squeeze this thing into a $600 box far outweighs the cost associated with you know, spending another 300 bucks a box. I mean, this is, I, I've been involved in this conversation over and over and over through the years. You should use uh, this particular nick inside your servers because, you know, you'll save, uh, you know, 10% on your processor time. Now, this is not Dash. Dash is a whole different thing altogether. It's like, yeah, but if I do that, and now I've got three different types of nicks and five different types of servers and all these different use cases, the amount of incremental engineering costs I got to go to manage all this stuff is ridiculous. And this is the same argument. I think that in this, this, we do ourselves a disservice by putting insufficiently powerful processes in our switches. No, understood, yeah. yeah. In, 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 in coming from a past life where I was at a hardware vendor for a while, I can tell you that your argument is not necessarily unfounded. Uh, they, uh, you know, they, they would choose to put, you know, it literally cost them a few hundred dollars difference between the chip that they would put in and they would choose to put in the smaller chip because they could dictate the OS to fit within that chip. Um, I think moving to Sonic is a bit of a, a of a game changer for customers, knowing that they actually are going to use more of that CPU. I mean, we were having that conversation on one of the breaks earlier, of how do we use the, you know, how do we make use of the CPU? Do we make this service go up, and then what's the, you know, how much before we tip over the CPU? Right. I, I do think there's going to be, and, and customers want the streaming telemetry, and they want this other data off the edge. So those same customers are going to end up, you know, wanting the CPU to be bigger anyway. At the end of the day. So to your point, I think maybe it is a bit of a learning curve for our customers to realize that there is something in value to have a, a little more expensive switch. I just think from my experience, my customers, you know, what they've said to me is the ones that are coming back for these edge use cases are saying they need a little bit more cost effective. Should it be at, at the cost of the CPU? Maybe not. Maybe we, maybe we could look at some chips from, you know, some of the, from the, that to be, could be onboarded by Broadcom or some of the other partners in this community that would be more cost effective and still have the feature set that they need. And to his point, they don't all need VXLAN, right? Yeah. And I go, why is this one the same price as that one? And they're like, what are you talking about, Adam? It's got, this has got 48 ports of this and 57 ports of that and blah, blah, blah. And I said, do you guys know anything about 30s? Do you know what a Surtees is? And they look at me and they go, I don't know what you're talking about, Adam. I'm like, so, you know, the Surtees is the thing that really matters here, not what the front of the switch actually is. And so this switch ought to be far less money than this one if we were getting the same discount across them. And guess what? We got the same discount across them and the price of that one went down. And so I think when I talk about procurement, I talk about how we manage the supply chain of how we buy things and the understanding level of buying things. But I think we do ourselves a real disservice trying to squeeze into these, into these very small processes. It was a con it's always been a continuing problem. It doesn't, you, you, you put a life cycle on this thing of five years and you find out two years down the track that the, the switch A stick will still do all the work you needed to do, but you can't run the software anymore. Yeah. Yeah, and and those of you online, he was just saying that we just need more choice in the market, which I do think is where I'm going here too. What's that? Yeah. Eh. 
it's handy for you at home. <laughs> it's handy for you at home to do. Yeah. 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 Correct. Yeah. So I. Yeah, and I do think there is a sweet spot here where the customers looking to do Sonic on the edge are willing to buy into the idea. Like, like he and I were both saying, we don't see them asking us for small density, very, very cheap switches, but they do, they are asking us for something more cost effective than what's in the market today. Um, at the cost of the main CPU, I, I think that as a community, like I, I think that's a decision that you know the technical leaders need to make i don't i'm not in that position and i'm okay with that decision i just think we got to figure out how to onboard something well, well i guess my point is from a sonic uh dis, um, decision making is probably the wrong word but a, a, a sonic community i think you know to, and i think that was the heart of your question is how small do you expect the os to go and and the answer is, I don't know that I have the answer, right? The answer is, I, I think it comes down to, can we onboard? I mean, personally, I would say, can we on, Can we look at the market, see what's in there? And and maybe it isn't the CPU and memory that's the problem. Maybe we just need to onboard some other couple of chips in the SI. I mean, I, that, I, 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 yeah. And, Correct. Yeah. So, in, in to your point, I don't I don't know that a smaller CPU and memory is necessarily the right answer. I, I do get the feedback from customers that a, a more cost-effective box is is needed, right, or is wanted. Maybe needed is a strong word. Wanted. So, yeah. Thank you, guys. It was a good debate. Hopefully it made you all think, uh, but yeah, like like he was saying, this there's a there's a lot of progress here. Um, my last slide there was just uh, my little nod to all the Star Wars fans. I really do believe in Sonic. I, I've seen it make a lot of progress since I first learned about it several years ago. Um, I've been in a couple different jobs advocating for it now, um, but yeah, I really do think this is going to be, you know, the a, a very uh, very popular winner in this open uh, network operating system space. So, thanks. Appreciate your time.